My name is Ike Ahmed. I'm at the University of Toronto. I practice cataract and glaucoma surgery. Um, interventional glaucoma, or IEG, has been a big concept for me. And this isn't a specific technology or a product. This is an attitude. Uh, being proactive in disease, uh, managing earlier and more aggressively, and not necessarily with added medications, but with interventional approaches. Now, why do I favor interventional glaucoma in terms of the approach? I think that medications and passive watching is helpful for some patients, but too many patients under our watch still progress, still get worse over time. And I think the need to intervene earlier, meaning getting lower, doing it safer, and doing it earlier, I think, hopefully will lead to less patients progressing and the less need to do more aggressive therapy. So I think we're in the era of interventional glaucoma because of some of the newer diagnostics, catching people earlier, uh, because of the newer technologies that allow us to intervene earlier, for example, like MIGs and other devices surgically. So that's kind of, what, to, to me, what, what interventional glaucoma means. Uh, I think the field is evolving with their understanding of how tough this disease is to treat if we don't get a head start on it. So, you know, MIGS, of course, was a procedure set that was designed that fits well within the wheelhouse of interventional glaucoma. And the way it's transformed glaucoma is it's allowed us to treat pressures in a surgical manner without relying on medications. And this is important because compliance and adherence are still major problems. And typical traditional surgical approaches, you know, of course, have early and late complications. So I think what MIGS has brought us is the ability to address these issues in a less invasive way. And I've always felt that elevated pressure, at least, is best managed surgically. The problem is a surgical issue, let's treat it surgically and do it in a safer manner. I think this has allowed us to do it, especially when it comes to combining with cataract surgery, and especially for patients that have earlier disease where we're not willing to take the risks of more aggressive options. You know, 10 years ago, we only had really one mix procedure. Uh, now we have over 12 different options. I think one of the challenges is to understand which option does best for which patient. Uh, we also realized that MIGS, as much as we enjoy the safety of MIGS, uh, we still are wanting for more efficacy. So better understanding, you know, where does MIGS fit, what particular device fits what particular patient, and how do we maximize the IP lowering, I think is where we still are working on, on options. I think we're going to get there, but it requires a better basic understanding of what these devices and procedures do. Uh, we have options, though, allowing us to go inside the eye or outside the eye, so it does allow us to tailor the you know, procedures based on pressure targets, whether we're going internally, canal-based, or whether we're going externally with subconjunctival based. So although we do have some barriers, I think the data is coming out more and more now efficacy-wise. Uh, the safety, I think, has well, been well described. But also thinking about quality of life, understanding the impact to our patients, which is beyond, of course, just a simple IOP number. Mm -hmm.